My name is Hannah Bish. I'm a grad student at the University of Washington. I'd like to share some recent work I've done with my wonderful collaborators. In this paper, we present the Quasar survey and the first measurements of the Milky Way's extended low velocity CGM. One of the challenges that comes with studying the galactic CGM is that low velocity gas is effectively hidden from us because we're embedded within the disk. When we observe the CGM and absorption using quasars as a background source, absorption from low velocity CGM gas is difficult to disentangle from foreground ISM absorption because the two are badly blended. Quasar is designed to overcome this complication by pairing quasars with halo stars above the disk at small angular separation on the sky. If two sightlines have small enough angular separation, we can assume that absorption from foreground gas is approximately the same for both, and use this information to correct for contaminating absorption in the quasar spectrum. We're left with a different spectrum, like this one on the bottom, which is showing us how much absorption originates from gas in the CGM beyond the halo star. Here's what this looks like in practice. The top panel is showing absorption from the carbon-4 doublet, where blue is the quasar and red is the star. The bottom panel shows the different spectrum, the excess absorption in the quasar originating beyond the halo star. In this work, we focus primarily on gas moving at less than 150 kilometers per second. The full quasar survey pairs 30 archival quasar spectra with new observations of halo stars with well-constrained distances of about 6 to 11 kiloparsecs. In this figure, the red points represent the locations of the halo stars, and the blue dashed lines extending beyond those points are the paired quasar sightlines at small angular separation. These sightline pairs evenly sample the sky at galactic latitudes above about 30 degrees. Both the archival quasars and the newly observed stars have HST cause spectra, which allows us to measure carbon-4 column densities. To quantify the excess absorption along the quasar sightline, we define a difference measurement, which is the difference in column density between the paired star and quasar for low-velocity carbon-4. In theory, this gives us the column density of the gas in the CGM beyond the halo star. Here's what our difference measurements look like plotted in projection on the sky. Blue markers represent a positive difference measurement, or excess absorption along the quasar sightline, and red markers represent a negative difference measurement, or excess absorption along the stellar sightline. On the bottom, the same difference measurements are being plotted against galactic longitude and latitude, and their distribution is shown in the middle. The gray shading shows the median sensitivity limit for these difference measurements. A few of the detections have negative difference measurements, which is a bit counterintuitive, but consistent with expected column density variations due to substructure in foreground gas. We also detect a previously identified low-velocity halo cloud sitting within 22 kiloparsecs of the disk, just beyond the halo stars. However, the majority of difference measurements are non-detections consistent with noise. To place these data in a broader context, we compare a carbon-4 covering fraction in the Milky Way, represented here with a star, to the covering fraction of existing carbon-4 measurements in the halos of other low-redshift star-forming galaxies, represented by the black line. Looking at the cumulative covering fraction as a function of normalized impact parameter, we find that the galactic covering fraction of 20% is much lower than measurements of other galaxies would suggest. These data from Quasar are the first measurements of the extended galactic CGM at low velocities and indicate that either the Milky Way CGM is lacking in warm ionized material compared to low redshift star forming galaxies, or that the carbon-4 traced CGM lies predominantly at low latitudes not covered by the survey. For more details, please see the paper on archive.